Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Libertarian Europe. I'm Lucas Nunes. Today, we are going to talk about libertarian businesses. We have Stéphane Gere from France again with us today. Uh, for those who didn't listen to the episode about libertarianism in France, Stéphane is one of the founders of the libertarian movement in France, and he started a business to spread liberty in France. Welcome, Stéphane. Good evening, Lucas. Thank you for having me. So, Stéphane, uh, you were working on a very interesting project, Edition, Edition Resurgence, which is a publishing company in France focused on spreading the ideas of liberty. You're translating and publishing liberty-minded books to the French language. How did it, how did it start and how is it going so far? Um, yeah, we, we started the, this business something like one year ago. I think it was one year ago, uh, one week ago, more or less. So that's pretty much the, the birth, the, the birthday of Edition Resurgence. The, um, it, it came through different stages. Uh, I guess I've been working in years ago already with the uh, Institut Coupé in France on translating a number of uh, uh, old French documents or uh, books from Rothbards and, and people like this in, in English back in French to, to make those uh, old-fashioned libertarian books ac uh, accessible to the French-speaking people. Uh, so I've been I've been doing this already for years, and uh, in that process, at some point, together with David Merlais in particular, we've been working on a few key translations. Probably the most famous one being the translation we did last year of Hopper's Democracy: The God That Failed in French. And so, in, in in parallel, the idea came to say, okay, we we start we stop pining up those translations and we need to get serious about it and if we really want to be able to uh, promote those translations if we really want to be able to promote the overall uh, such translation beyond only democracy to the french-speaking uh, people because Still, there are quite a number of people in France and in the francophonie, French-speaking countries, who speak mostly French, if not only French. So they deserve to have access to those key literature, I would say. So the idea to say, okay, let's try to go beyond the mere translation by itself and, and find ways to promote and to structure and, and possibly to to grow in terms of capacity to translate and to produce such uh, books. So then came, obviously, the idea of building a business. Uh, let's be libertarian in the mindset and libertarian in the reality. So we created Edition Resurgence. Uh, it's a very small company, to be honest, and at the moment the business is still really small, but it, it is a real one with real money and real trans transactions. Um, and clearly the objective of Edition Resurgence is to grow in capacity, grow in influence and uh, promote those books and to start to be a brand basically and strong enough a brand so that we would be able to be starting to, to touch the, I would say, key influences. And, and to promote the, those translations and, uh, and works uh, beyond the, the traditional circles, I would say. Uh, that's, that's the basic objective. Of course, if we can make significant business, the better. But uh, the first initial driver is definitely to approach in a business way the question of promoting the libertarians' ideals in, in the French-speaking language countries. And how many books have you published so far? I guess uh, on the catalog as we speak, uh, we have uh, 22, I think. Uh, four of them are, are were written in French originally. So we, if you set all them aside, I guess we are by 18 books currently. Uh, not all of them are as sizable as Democracy, but we, we do have quite a number of sizable books already. I mean, Democracy... Uh, the market for liberty from the Tan Hill as well. Um, uh, short history of man from hope as well. So 
I guess probably 50% of those 18 books would be more than 100 pages. And uh, recently, one of the books that you published through uh, Edition uh, Resurgence was a book by Thomas Sowell. And it, this book had its preface written by Laurent Auberton, who is a famous book writer in France. How was it for Edition Resurgence? Yes, that's uh, it's it's a bet we we made to try and find someone whose name would be famous enough so that the very fact that his name would be on the book would be obviously open uh, to uh, give us access to a much wider audience and it's really what we see happening so maybe maybe for those not living in France uh, maybe not all of them would know who Laurent Auberton is uh, he's been, uh, I think, he's been writing books on France uh, for the last ten years. He's definitely a right winger. Uh, maybe, if, maybe many many people will see him as an extreme right winger. But the reality is uh, that uh, when uh, the, the, the the fact is that when we published Democracy from Hope. Uh, he bought the book and he went through the book and he even made a few videos where he he showed that he had booked uh, and read the book. Okay, so he made promotion, and I know since that he's read a, num a number of other libertarian books, and you can tell by the very fact that the, the if you read the latest book he has himself written, Eloge de la Force. The first chapters are, it could be written by any one of the any one of us. I mean, it's a fight against the state. So the gentleman, if you like, coming from the extreme right wing, has been slowly moving positively to a libertarian, much more libertarian mindset, and is now an, a, a true libertarian. He doesn't pre introduce himself as such for political reasons, but in fact, when you listen to him, he is one. So when we saw this, we, we started discussing with him and negotiate uh, so that his name would be uh, in front of the next book, especially a book from, as you said, Thomas Sowell, uh, Intellectual, Intellectuals in Race. Uh, we Pick that book because it's. Uh, I mean, the, the the title is very. Um, I mean, uh, calling out and intriguing, and it's intentional, intentional that we've picked it picked it up. Uh, but the very fact that it's one of the very first translations of Thomas Sowell in French, plus Laurent Berton on the front. The result, it's been last week. The result is already. We've been contacted by quite a number of. Uh, even libraries, for instance, uh, which never happened to us before. So I believe the brand is getting a lot more uh, exposure, positively. And we see more sales being done through this than before. It's still not like we are, I mean, it's not by the thousands, to be honest. But we have a clear, clear difference of scale already by, by those two names uh, as part of our catalog. That's very interesting that you mentioned uh, Laurent Berton the, uh, talking about this, these libertarian topics because uh, recently I had watched an interview by him and, uh, from a French channel and it was very interesting and he sounded uh, a libertarian. Yeah. And I was very surprised because I didn't even uh, I didn't know that he had read the book, and I didn't know uh, when I watched this interview that he had written the preface of the book as well. So it's very interesting how your 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 work is actually impacting people in France already through the books that you you started to translate now. Yes, and there is another example, maybe not so impactful, to be honest, but still, I think it's a very good sign. When when we did the translation last year of Market for Liberty, in French it's now La Liberté par le marché, uh, we convinced uh, another right-winger, uh, not so known, but still very influential as well, Paul-Éric Blanru, uh, a very 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 dark uh, right winger as well, but but a very strong writer as well, 
And he also made the preface for this book. And same thing, the very fact that he has his name on the book, he is a promoter of the book, of course, and there are quite a number of people f coming from his influence that reach out to us. So that's another area where at least this book, in that case, has been uh, in, being introduced and kind of penetrating uh, people who so far were completely... Uh, oblivious to libertarians' uh, ideas. And, and I guess that's why we are trying to, to, to approach, um, how can I say, no, it's, it's why we created Resurgence. Uh, Resurgence is, is libertarian it's in mindset and everything, but if you look at the website, uh, editionresurgence.com, uh, we, we, we talk more about things such as uh, uh, civilization. We, we tr the, the, the name resurgence is to try to say it's not about it's about liberty. It's about civilization. Libertarian. We don't really care. What we care is that in fact the uh, long uh, non everlasting, I would say, values of uh, civilizations and, or, and humanity, okay, with, which basically have brought us so far, uh, which we have forgotten for the last 200 years, thanks to the revolutions and the leftists and everything, okay, and freedom and civilization are, are core to humanity so far, uh, we, we try to be humble factors of its Resurgence, return, basically. That's where the name comes from. So we're trying to take a name, but it's purely marketing here, but still, it's about business. So we're trying to have a name which might be appealing or talking to those people coming from, from the right. Okay, it's not left twist here, too, but whatever. And so far, yes, I see those different books penetrating those areas and... Hopefully, they will influence those people even more. So, you're really focusing more on this right-wing public, no? Yes, at the moment, at least certainly for Resurgence, yes, that's definitely what we're doing. Uh, I'm, I'm, Of course, I, I'd be happy if any leftist comes to us, and obviously, anyone, obviously. But, uh, yeah, the, 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 the thinking is very simple, if you like. Of course, there are many people on the right wing who are not libertarians and will never be because they are so uh, encroached, I would say, to the state, the nation, uh, and things like that. So, okay. But, on the other hand, when you think about it, what is liberty? Liberty is very, very fundamentally related to uh, private property. Okay, uh, and private property, history-wise at least, is at the core of the right-wing thinking. Uh, if I'm an owner of my own house, the very fact that I'm, it's important for me to be an owner uh, and it is typically related to s and, or entrepreneurship as well. There are many, many values that you would typically see on the right, which are at the core of the, li of the libertarians' values as well. Uh, you could argue that it's true on the left. Yes, possibly, but uh, I often say that uh, liberty will be from, from the left. Today, the left will consider private property as sacred, which is not really the case. So all this to say that, yes, it's true that we mostly focus on right-wingers, indeed. Um, I'm happy that any other initiative would focus on left-wingers -winger, with success. Why not? But at least that's the target we have. And so far, I guess uh, I see evidence that we are indeed penetrating those, those people. Why do you think it's important to start a liberty-minded business as a business? Well, there are a number of reasons. Uh, one is tactical. Uh, I think if we uh, market ourselves as a brand, as a company, as an editor, uh, on the one hand, you become a normal business, okay? You are, you are kind of like every other edition, editing business, okay? Um, it's also much more respectable. It's also much more neutral politically. So in terms of tactics, I think it's important. If you, if you show yourself as a party, 
uh, it's not the same thing as if you show yourself as a company, as an editor. Even if your even if your catalog of books is definitely oriented to liberty, civilization, right wingers, or whatever, uh, it, it 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 goes much better in terms of uh, reputation, I believe. So that's one reason. The second reason is, of course, that we we need also to, at the end of the day, to be driven by success. Uh, even at the moment, the reason why we're picking up books is not only driven by the expectation of being, making big business, that, that's not the reason, but eventually, if we think that the book is not going to be having any success at all, yes, certainly we're not going to pick it up. Uh, the objective is definitely, at the end of the day, to have a, a catalog of books which would have some value on the market, uh, because it will be a key indicator of success. Let's make it simple. And in, of success in terms of success of the objective. The more people will be buying books will be a sign that they are indeed buying our IDs. I guess that's the basic idea. And are you looking for partnerships with people in other European nations uh, that would like to perhaps start a similar business in another country handling other languages? That's a good question. I, I would not say that I'm looking for partnerships. That's not true because we are still very young. I mean, in one year, uh, profits are still very thin, to be honest. The team is still small. It's growing, uh, but we, we are very much in infancy still at the moment. Um, partnerships Okay, we, we might, if, especially in terms of sales. Yes, I mean, if we can grow our sales and find partnerships to be able to sell beyond France, yes, for sure. That's definitely one. But, uh, but on the other hand, partnerships in the sense that because it's a libertarian business, not only just a business, uh, there probably are experience to be drawn and shared and, and leveraged with possibly other countries or other languages to try and find ways to duplicate, uh, multiply, um, share best practices. Uh, there are many, I mean, I'm making that up, but for example, should a similar business be created in Germany, if there isn't already one, um, maybe we can benefit from sharing uh, possibly a team, possibly the tools, possibly the practices, drawing experience in terms of sales practices and marketing practices. There are probably a number of things that we, we would be benefiting for one another from uh, one country to another, just at least from a purely marketing standpoint, for instance. How big is your team right now? Um, I would say we are having something like between between six and ten people working on uh, on different levels on the team. I mean, the core is uh, Davy and myself, and then we have uh, a, a number of people helping on the translations. Since most of the, what we're doing is a translation. And of course, translation can be a tedious job. So we, we have currently six projects running, six translations running. Um, and uh, we can have like up to three people working on a single project. So I would say, yeah, the team, I mean, I, I, I don't count, but it's probably like six, seven people. And what I'm trying to build currently is... Um, a layered team. What I mean by layered team would be uh, something like a, a troop of uh, young people producing most of the basics for translations, and then a team which reviews and refines and fine tunes the translation, and then the next level team which really goes through every single detail. So, uh, 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 improve even better the, the style and wording, and then goes for producing the book by itself because it's also a process that we need to go through. So that's what I'm organizing right now, to start having a, a layered team so that we can uh, produce even more in terms of speed and, and volume. What are the biggest challenges for Edition Resurgence? Oh, that's a good question, but it's uh, very... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, it depends which perspective you're taking. If you're taking perspective like five years from now, I mean, we really need to reach a level of business where we can 
uh, live out of it. I mean, that's, it's not a sustainable, well, it is a sustainable business right now, but it's the level of revenue doesn't make it such that even one second person would would live out of it, let's be honest, okay? So that's definitely one of the challenges. But it's a midterm one. At the short term right now, what we really need to be able to do better is to uh, have proper, a, a team truly streamlined so that we have we can have a true cadence of production, we can plan, we can uh, really go like a, a true production business with deadlines, dates, and timeline, etc. That's the second one, uh, and we're working on this. And the next one is reputation. Uh, and because we, we would have a, a stronger reputation, then we can expect to have even more people working for us, like like the Oberton. So what I mean is finding even more people happy to make prefaces or preambles, I mean, putting their names, basically, on on, on uh, resurgence uh, books. At the moment, we have uh, Blanru, we have Oberton, we have also Pascal Salin for Democracy, so three very good names. We need more of them, and we need more of them in a way which would be uh, uh, making it possible to, to produce even more books in the future. So I would say these are the three challenges I see at the moment. Um, the most difficult one probably is the, is the latest I mentioned, get, getting more names and uh, attracting more people. And uh, regarding the regarding the the people that are working with you, are they doing this like part time? How is it going in this matter? Oh, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I leave it to them, to be honest. But my understanding is mo most of what we're producing is on a purely voluntary basis, and it's indeed part-time. I mean, we, we, it's not like we, we, we are not big enough so far. Maybe it, change, it will change on one day. But we are not big enough so far to have full-time salaries, a paid job or, on, on this. It's... It will eventually be the case, hopefully, but that's not what we have at the moment. No, it's part time, uh, and uh, yeah, p mostly on a voluntary basis. It will change, but that, that's the reality of today. That's good to hear. Well, I think that's all for this episode, Stefan. It was really great to have you again, and uh, I hope to talk about uh, libertarian businesses with you again because we have to talk about your other project which is the Mises Institute France, no? Yes, yes. Uh, and indeed, and thank you for this. And I guess it's again the same idea as you introduced uh, before. I mean, it's uh, we, we, uh, we have created and it's still in infancy again this one. We've created a Mises Institute France um, this time the objective is more to go with a lot of similarity of what, of course, the, cent the global Mises Institute does, but also going more on the training, I would say, and on uh, economy kind of front, as opposed to general libertarian books that Resurgence is taking in, char in charge. Uh, so it will be kind of a complementary business uh, as well. But it's the same idea from the from the beginning. We we want to promote the ideas from liberty and libertarians, and we want to do it in a kind of business uh, kind of way. I guess it's the same idea. Yeah. So we'll chat again about that on the sure. next episode. And thank you again, Stefan. My pleasure, Lucas. I like uh, each time. Thank you for this. So, we have reached the end of this episode. If you like this content, share it with your friends and please subscribe to our channels. You can also support us with some donation at our website, libertarianeurope.com. There you can also find a lot of interesting content, not only in English but also in other languages. Thank you for listening to this podcast. See you again soon. Stay brave and most importantly, stay free.